Hey guys, it's Michelle from Women Who Wow, the premier mentoring and coaching platform for the seriously driven women entrepreneur. If you are one of those, you need to make sure you reach out to me and uh, let me know more about your business so I can invite you into Women Who Wow. Today is the first episode of the Women Entrepreneur Success Show. I am going to be playing with this and finding my own groove here, but I will be doing it weekly. After um, we put it on Facebook, we will put it over on YouTube, and I I am super excited about this. I want to have my own show, not just kind of a willy-nilly like rant or whatever I'm talking about. So I have a little bit of a process today. I don't know if that's going to be the process that I stick with, but we are going to start where we are right now with episode one. So what we're talking about today is the word commoditization, right? And there's two things that you need to accept about being commoditized in your industry. The first is that your market absolutely wants to commoditize you. Why would they want to commoditize you? Because it makes the buying decision easier for the consumer, right? If all things are equal, they can then just buy um, the cheapest price or the, the most convenient delivery or what have you, right? And so, the second part about commoditization is that when you are commoditized, you lose big time, right? When you are commoditized, you're going to lose time freedom and you're going to lose money freedom. And so I want to tell you three things that you need, three tools that you need to escape being commoditized despite our loving market's um, desire, even if it's an unconscious desire to commoditize us. And this episode is brought to you by some woman, women entrepreneurs who are doing something extremely cool. They are disrupting the healthcare system. They happen to be Women Who Wow members. Surgeon Paula Muto created findanuberdoc.com. Findanuberdoc.com. This is where you can go to have direct access to a specialist, to a medical specialist. So I've got three kids that were very active when they were younger, and they're very active now. But um, when they were younger, I always always had to, um, you know, let's say they sprained their ankle or hurt their ankle at a game because you don't know if it's sprained yet. You don't know if it's sprained, if it's broken, if they're just overreacting. You don't know those things, right? So you're at a sports event, your kid goes down and they stay down. And so you're like icing and you go through the obligatory, um, you know, night with your husband and your mom, maybe like, well, should I take him to the ER? Should I not take him to the should, Well, let's wait till Monday morning. Well, what should we do, right? And the reason is, you you don't want to, it's not like you want to do your kids wrong, right? But you don't want to, um, you don't want to waste a bunch of time, right? You first go to your primary care physician. They're going to take an x-ray. No one's there to read the x-ray, so you got to wait. If it is broken, you got to go to a specialist, right? Find an uberdoc.com actually cuts out all the middlemen. It does not matter what insurance you have. You play a, pay a flat one transparent fee for your appointment with the specialist of your choice. You make that appointment online, you pay online, and you show up, right? And now you can choose to only use findanuberdoc.com with the people who are within your health insurance system, if that's if you have health insurance, right? Because any future work you could use the insurance for. But this is a way to cut out the middleman, cut out the referral sources, and go straight to the specialist that you need. So I love sharing what Cool women entrepreneurs are doing across our country and across our globe. And so we're going to do that at the start of each and every woman entrepreneur success show. So today I want to thank Paula Muto and her team for creating find an Uber doc. doc. Dot com. If you know of a woman entrepreneur who should be featured here, definitely let me know what she's doing to change things up in her industry. But I want to get back to the purpose of our time together today. I want to talk about how to resist being commoditized, right? Being commoditized is a kiss of death for your business because it will eliminate your ability to command the fees that you deserve. It will eliminate your ability to set parameters around your work that you deserve and that actually make um, business fun for you and enjoyable for you. And the second thing you should know, as I said at the start, your market actually subconsciously wants to commoditize you. They're actively, they're, the way they think is actively trying to commoditize you. Why? Because when you are commoditized, they're buying 
buying decision is a lot easier, right? When you are commoditized, then they can name their own price. There's no sense of urgency. They don't have to like go by your rules, right? They just buy the lowest price and they get what they want. That's why even subconsciously, they might be trying to commoditize everyone they do business with. But there are three things that you need in order to avoid, and you do want to avoid at all costs, being commoditized. The first is authority, right? The second is relationship. The third is voice recognition and preference, right? Those go hand in hand. So authority is not a noun. It is a process. It's a deliberate process of positioning yourself as an expert or leader in your industry for the purpose of commanding influence in that industry, right? So it's a process. Building authority is not about just writing a book, although that can help you create authority. It is not about just a new brand on your website. It is not about new headshots. It is not about any specific association that you want to make with some other leader in your industry. It's not a one thing and it's not a noun. It is a process. It's a deliberate process of positioning you as the expert or leader in your industry for the purpose of commanding influence in that industry. I saw someone, um, recently who is selling a course on how to uh, create a membership program. And she uh, does have a membership program. Some people selling these things uh, don't have a membership program, which is always interesting to me. But she actually does have a membership program. So kudos to her, right? Um, but her numbers are different. They're concerning to me, right? So I have been running membership programs since way before they were cool. This actually has a point. I have something to offer you for like such a cheap price if you want it. Uh, but I've been running memberships since way before they were cool. And this woman is kind of new, but she is impressive. And I am talking, she has almost 700,000 followers on her Facebook page. But there's a little problem with her numbers because the number of members, paying members that she has is about one half of a percent. So it's like three to 5,000 members, right? Now, if I only got one half, and definitely less to three quarters of, of a percent of the people that I'm engaging with involved in my membership program, I know something's wrong, right? So we have right around 600 members and I think I have like 1,400 followers on Facebook. I gotta work on that. But, um, you know, it, it's a it's nearly a 50%, right? So you gotta, um, you gotta look at this, how much influence this person really has, right? Your authority commands influence and that means that people trust you. When you say you got to join this program, they believe you. When you say you've got to come in and, and um, let's get some work done on this, they believe you, right? So the authority process is about establishing yourself as an expert for the sole purpose of commanding influence within your industry. This is a deliberate, strategic process is authority building, right? Many things can help you create authority. There's not one thing that you have to do to create authority. A lot of people say it's a book. I think it's a good option. Um, some people say it's a podcast. I think it's a great option. Another thing, it, you know, they might say, um, they used to say a blog. They used to say being on TV. All those things are great options, right? I use most of them. I mean, we're largely on other people's podcasts at this point. I do have a book out. I have a couple new books coming out, but I haven't relied on any of them, right? I have established authority by showing up as a leader, not when I felt like it, not when I was inspired, and not when the muse strikes. I have shown up as a leader every single day for a long time in this industry, right? So the, the process of authority is something that you build day by day by day, brick by brick by brick. Now, if you want me to help you with that, I can certainly help you with that, but this is not like a one size fits all scenario, right? So you want to write, you want to speak, whatever it is you're gifting, but, and you want to show up in two ways. This is how you build authority to avoid being commoditized, right? You show up first, you show up as an, as an expert and not as a peer. That is so critical, right? A lot of people are wondering why no one pays them to coach them. And they're showing up at every networking event as a peer. It just is never going to work for you, right? So show up as a P, as an expert, not as a peer. The second um, rule for showing up to build authority is to show up daily, right? And I say daily, I mean Monday through Friday. Okay, so the second 
thing that you need to be sure you're not commoditized is a relationship with your market. Um, there's a lot of people who teach uh, ways to avoid a relationship with your market. They're teaching leverage when you have no clients. They are teaching distance um, when you have no relationship. It is important to show up and get to know your people intimately. It's important to know what they're talking about. It's important to know as much as you can um, what's going on in their lives. It is important to, for you to know the obstacles that they are um, they're engaging with. It's why uh, Women Who Wow membership comes with one-to-one -one time with me. Now, I won't always be able to keep that as a member benefit. Um, in 2019, it'll go away for newcomers. For our existing members, you'll always be grandmothered in, right? But you want to have a relationship with your people. This is a member benefit that I think people really like. Um, when I was accepting private clients, it was $2,500 a month paid every month, and they had two sessions with me. That was how things ended. That's what I let go of to focus 100% on women who wow. And so to have twice um, a month laser sessions with me, people like that, right? But the truth is I love it. It allows me to know my people. It allows me to build a relationship. It, it allows me to be loyal to them, and they become loyal to me and so you want to build relationship not in a willy-nilly way you do want to have rules to access in fact um, for all of our women who wow members there's that seven systems training and one of those systems that I have at play every day in my business is my access plan who has access to me when and how much this is critical because when you have a plan when you have a system you are free to build relationship within that right and so it's also a key component to enjoying your business is when you have this access plan so you're not 24 hours a day available to people. People aren't calling and expecting you to answer your phone and stuff like that. Um, so you cannot commoditize or leverage relationship. You just can't do it, right? And if you do, it will cost you in terms of authority. It will cost you in terms of being commoditized because without that relationship, it is easy to Amazon your tail, right? That's easy to do. All right, the next third things so we have authority, we have relationship, and the next thing you need to do to avoid being commoditized at all costs is be sure that you are um, putting your voice out there so that your market first recognizes it and second prefers it. The truth is people can get information anywhere and you want people to know that, um, that they want people to recognize what your voice is and you want people to prefer to get their news, their information from you, right? They, you want people to like your twisted little view of whatever it is that you do. And so when your tribe starts to recognize your voice, and then they start to prefer it, what happens is you grow really quickly because there is a brand preference in the market for your specific brand. The truth is we all have people that are doing something really similar to us in the marketplace, right? Like um, there's Vera Bradley, who is a sponsor for Women Who Wow live in Nashville. So thank you to Vera Bradley, especially to Barbara and to Cynthia from Vera Bradley. Um, but Louis Vuitton also sells bags. Massimo also sells bags at Target, right? And they all make a handbag, but each of those brands are preferred by a different market, right? And the same can be true for you, right? The truth is, uh, especially when I started doing coaching, like you couldn't go to the 7-Eleven without running into five, six, seven coaches, right? There's like the Slurpee store and, you, and you're running into coaches. Now, um, well, for a little while, the, the herd was thinned a little bit. Uh, now I think people are getting back into the coaching um, craze, I guess. Um, but the truth is, people preferred to be coached by me. They preferred my bedside manner, my no BS bedside manner. They preferred um, hearing from me because they weren't, I wasn't going to tell them to put, you know, some seven step process in place, whether they liked it or not. They preferred to be coached by me because I had an eye for copy that would sell. When you have copy that sells and you are leveraged, your time is leveraged. Um, you create copy pieces that are like little employees that you pay one time and they continue to produce for you over time. So I developed a voice preference in the market. And that's exactly what you can do as well with your showing up daily. The key here, not just showing up daily and not just showing up as an expert, but if you want them to prefer your voice, you've got to really let them hear it. And that means you can't 
water yourself down. You can't be a me too kind of uh, person in the marketplace. You cannot be echoing what everybody else in your industry is saying. You've got to stand on your own um, twisted little view of doing what you do. You've got to be able to able and willing to let your real voice be heard, say what you're really thinking, even if it brings some haters. I, I had my first uh, real dose of online bullying um, it, when I was in Tennessee, actually. I, um, I posted something on my personal page, and then someone made a comment, and her comment was not bad, but I wasn't friends with her. I didn't know who she was, never had a conversation with her. She's not a member, and she's not a business owner, and I and other people were saying things back to her that I didn't think was so nice. And so I deleted her comment and it deleted all the comments back to her. And somehow that made me a disgrace to women everywhere, right? That I wasn't letting women be heard and I somehow have an obligation to give any woman a stage that I have built brick by brick. But anyway, the, the online bullying, sorry, I am talking some nasty messages, some threatening messages, some, I, I just never seen that, but the, the, not for me personally. But you've got to be willing to deal with some haters. You've got to be willing to deal with some pushback in order to say what you really believe, in order to have your voice really heard. If your voice is so similar to everybody else out there, you will never get the voice recognition and preference that you need in order to have people lining up to work with you, let alone, you know, just you know, you're going to stay in that zone of like hoping and praying that this client comes in and this client comes in and this client comes in, right? That is is um, why people come to me, frankly. They want, they don't want to learn how to um, get one client by one client by one client, right? Because that is a not a fun way to live. They want to learn how to create demand for their voice so that they have a line of people waiting at the door. They get to cherry pick their clients and then eventually leverage, um, you know, their their content and their work into, um, into leverage streams of income for groups or events or what have you. Um, so that is what I want to talk with you about today. But don't leave me because I do have a deal of the week, right? And so the the recap really to this is you do not want to be commoditized. It is a kiss of death for your business. Your market wants to commoditize you. And the three ways, the three tools that you have at your disposal to combat commoditization at all cost is uh, voice recognition and preference, relationship and authority. And if you jumped in late, go back and listen to the video so you can see how to build each of those. The um, deal of the week is my membership millions, my membership miracle program. This is teaching people how I started Women Who Wow and how they can start, how you can start your own membership program. It sold for $4.97 and if you want it today, you can get it for $297. You just message me m.me backslash women who wow and let me know that you want access to your membership miracle program and I am super excited to, um, to show this to you. This is one of my most exciting programs. I was able to really detail um, everything I did to build Women Who Wow, as well as my other membership programs, but also um, how they are in stark contrast to everything else that's being taught about membership programs. And so I also wrote a Money Inc. article about uh, membership programs, and they've asked me to write another one specific to membership. So it's a good time to do a deal of the week um, for that. So next week, we are going to be talking about the seven systems that are at play in my business at any time. And every day, these seven systems are at play in my business in one way or another. And so that's what we're going to be talking about next week on the Women Entrepreneur Success Show. So I really appreciate you guys being here. If you have a woman who should be featured, let me know. If you want the deal of the week, let me know. And come to back and join me 1130 roundabout on next Tuesday for another episode of the Women Entrepreneurs Success Show. Talk with you soon. Bye.